and see that many, many books comes, the way to lead is to serve. This leader has to be 360 degree leader. When I see a CEO who deals with the, the person who brings him the tea every morning, different than his board members, I know the CEO is fake. You are either genuinely kind person or you're not. Just, this book just came out, The Leader Who Had No Title, and that's what we want to accomplish at IMC. The idea is the leader. I truly believe in this, love leadership. When I used to give a presentation three, four years ago, I was advised with the close people around me, say, please stop now giving these kind of lectures because people can't see what you're talking about. Wait until you achieve the numbers. Then you tell people the way we achieved it is by this kind of leadership. So I did. I did uh, for two years. I stopped giving presentations. And those who've been here with me for five years, they're aware of that. Now I'm very much convinced this is the only way to lead. Love leadership in a new way to lead is in a fear-based world. What do I mean by love leadership? First, help a person love himself or love make her love herself by giving them all the tools to be successful. Once the person feels successful and loves themselves, help them also love their colleagues by removing all the obstacles. I call it join and conquer, not divide and conquer. And those of you who know me know that many times I spend so much time to make sure that people are in good terms. You could have two individuals are too far apart, one in operation, one in medical, and I don't like it when people are not feeling good towards each other. And they tell me that, don't worry, we're going to treat each other in a very professional way. And I tell them you can harm and you can destroy another person in a very professional way. There's nothing called professional way, there's something called either you love the person and willing to shake hands with that person and work with him, or you're not willing to do that. So many times I, I even do it at home, bring people home and uh, bring that person with two individuals who love that person, that person with two people who love that person, and those two and two love each other for a workshop at home for three, four hours, and then dinner. And I've done it once, it took only 10 minutes for the two individuals to re each one remember how good the per other person is, and they hug, and we spend the rest of the night laughing and having dinner. And from that point, they're working nicely together. So the point is called join and conquer, not divide and conquer. So number one, help a person love himself or herself. Love them, help them love their colleagues. Give them a mission of life that they love, a pure mission of life. When they wake up in the morning, say, I'm going to work for more than just work. I am part of a mission that will remain for hundreds of years. I truly believe if we do those three, love themselves, love their colleagues, love the mission and vision, I truly believe that hopefully they will love the leader. And without loving the leader, people will not give you that extra 10, 20, 100 miles. So I truly believe it's the only way to lead. We start with our uh, logo. We put the mind in the top which means how to create a culture in which the mind is respected, how do you respect the intellect of our patients, how do you make patients part of the treatment, how do you respect the intellects of our colleagues, how do we teach with kindness. Many examples, I provide you with one example, which is called the round table concept, the principle-centered leadership. In my executive board meeting, I uh, insisted to have a round table, even though it was designed for an oval table to emphasize that the boss in any meeting is not the one who carries the highest title, but the idea which can get the support from the people around the table. And I'm very proud to tell you I lost my votes many, many, many times. Only last week I lost my vote myself. I'm a chairman of, uh, chairman of ER. We lost the vote against the uh, overwhelming vote of the others. Our pride is to revive what we call the obligatory consultation. And I think this is what makes IMC different. Now, the concept of the obligatory, obligatory consultation has to be understood that for every kind of decision, there are certain people who should be 
making the decision because one time I had I was stopped with uh, somebody in the, uh, uh, in the elevator. He's worked it. Nobody took my 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 uh, uh, opinion about that decision you made. I said, well, sh the consultation is not for the 1,400 people to vote, but I assure you that the right people who are uh, uh, knowledgeable to make that decision are following the consultation, obligatory consultation uh, principle. The bear's eye model, we always start from the patient perspective. All the processes radiate from the patient. We always ask the question, what is best for the patient? We are patient's advocate. And the IMC higher management ideally should come from only patient perspective, echoes tangential only and echoes to all other processes, uh, processes. With the third dimension is the quality and the education and strategy. The second model is the trust model. And that model was my, my contract with my partners and investors from day number one. And I said, this is the contract with you. I am going to have to fuel until we get the trust. So don't tell me enough. I will fuel with hundreds of millions. And we did. Building trust through service excellence, patient centeredness, measurement, accountability, innovation, so we can have an accurate diagnosis and treatment, care image, efficiency, effectiveness, experienced and best practice image. And I promised my partners that if we do that, eventually, you can have more patients, more partners, and more, more financial growth. When you work for something on this earth, I truly we truly believe at IMC, and the objective is not financial, eventually, you'll make more money. And that's a belief of the International Medical Center uh, farmers and institution. And I believe that when God set the universe, he set one universal order. And that universal order is timeless and eternal. It has an underlying laws and principles which are common to all divine religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, such as honesty, sincerity, dedication, altruism, justice, fairness. I believe as much as we align our intentions and actions to these underlying laws and principles, there is a built-in reward system for us in this life and the life after. The most destructive concept prevailing in this world today is that for you to be successful, you have to be a crook. You have to know how to play the game. And other terms, for example, the Arabic terms, to kun shatir, or shatir who is sariq. If we do nothing at IMC, but to prove to the whole world being ethical and follow the highest standards of ethics and values and being honest will yield more success and financial reward than other institutions who are unethical. That would be enough for us to accomplish on this earth. Because that by itself is going to revive something good. People can't believe this. And they have to see it with their own eyes. And that's what we're trying to accomplish at IMC. I always say it's not, it's, it, cannot, it cannot be. When God says, this is my, my way, be honest, sincere, just, and fair. And somebody says, God, I'm going to follow your guidance. I'm going to follow the catalog. Another person says, no, God, I want to get the most out of this life. So I'm going to violate all of this. I'm going to play the game. It's impossible for God to give this person more than that person. It's impossible for God to give that institution more than that institution. However, sometimes God gives it in a way which is best for that person. You might give it to him as a wealth or health or any other forms. And God knows what's best for, our, for us and our institutions. That's another model, which is building trust through community programs, medical education, and IMC Academy. So we have the corporate social responsibility image, teacher image, ideal employer, and eventually we'll have more patients and help us to build our future college, more referral, better performance, easy to headhunt, and finally, we'll have an indirect revenue. Because once you lose trust, you lose everything. And it's very difficult to regain trust. And that's exactly what today uh, we, f we feel that other institutions in Saudi Arabia are trying to catch up. But it will take them quite some time to rebuild the trust that they lost. So at IMC, we cherish that very much. 
And the trust, we call it the one thing that changes everything. Now, that's why when we respect the mind, from day number one, we started with education, even before we started the operation of the hospital. We invested heavy in our auditorium with uh, the IT, uh, which was uh, uh, designed carefully, uh, big investment, two-way connection in any part of the world. We even have the live transmission when we had the king uh, open the facility four years ago. Uh, even we activate the, the role of the uh, prayer hall for education when we invite the uh, masses for things like smoking cessation, prevention programs, and others. Uh, family and patient education center. Uh, even before we started, before we finished the construction, we already had conferences. And that conference was uh, conducted five years ago uh, in the Western Hotel because at that time, our auditorium wasn't even ready for us. And that was the first International Diabetes Symposium. We even started something new. Uh, again, the concept is to give a new model. So we, start, we brought the uh, private hospitals, the government hospitals into uh, a conference. We even uh, introduced a new kind of awards that we give awards to other institutions, whether private hospitals or government hospitals or achievements. So IMC beginning to, to take a role of the a mother, a mother or the uh, parenting, uh, not a competition in terms uh, of the tribal mentality, but a competition in terms of trying to improve the quality of health care by having everybody succeed with us. And this is the conference, this is the Ministry of Health, this is the governor, and this is the university uh, dean. And this some of the awards we received. Now, Respecting the mind, before we came to Saudi Arabia, I was very surprised to find everybody took, says consultant, 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 doctors. Patients don't even have the right to ask exactly the doctor, where did you study, what kind of experience you have. So we thought the best way to change our society is to be ourselves the change we would like to see in the world around us. So we introduced what you call the know your doctor, ta'arraf ala tabibak, and every doctor has this description in Arabic and English, and it's available in the outpatient and the inpatient. Now patients go out to other institutions, and many of them demand some information. I even received a call from somebody who says, you're, you're causing trouble for us, because a patient comes and insulted one of our uh, jihabida, one of our uh, great doctors. He said, what, I asked the CEO, what did he tell him? He said, he asked the doctor, give me your CV. And the doctor says, what, you don't trust me? He said, no, I do trust you, but IMC is giving us those uh, know your doctor. So I thought it would be nice for us to know more about you. So this is the way we change our societies. And again, giving the patient the right to ask and respecting their mind. And by the way, I have some doctors who even put the, the names of their children down there because they found this to be nice personal touch. And I was told that this is truly uh, made a difference to patients when they come and they feel that the doctor even willing to share the name of the children with the, pa with the, pa with the patients. Respecting the mind, education, I mean our corporate social responsibility this year has uh, two uh, major uh, uh, themes. One is the smoking cessation theme, the other one is the uh, basic life support. Again, education, and uh, this is one of the brochures. We have a, a comprehensive campaign for smoking cessation. We went out to the malls and, uh, for education, for free uh, uh, blood pressure, heart rate, and uh, cholesterol, uh, uh, and, and uh, diabetes uh, sugar check, and giving some guidance to patients. Uh, basic and advanced life support. We were pioneers. Right now, we're giving certificates to other institutions who have been there in the market for 30 years. They don't even have the license for advanced life support. Now that's, I'm going to share with you also another initiative, uh, which is we, felt, we found out that, unfortunately, uh, the basic life support is not widely um, uh, a, a knowledge which is uh, uh, spread enough in Saudi Arabia. And we had a story of somebody who died, 17 years old, in swimming pool, uh, in uh, a school, uh, school uh, trip. 41 students could not help him neither the teachers. So we, we took the story, very nice story, uh, very touchy story, 
we add to it a basic life support, a small 